My name is Jacob. Uh, I'm a senior infrastructure engineer at a startup, uh, if you can tell by the clickbait title, uh, in the San Francisco Bay called Formation. Uh, also, I'm gonna go through this pretty quickly, so if you've got questions about it, feel free to find me afterwards. So, Formation's a pretty solid company to work for. We're a functional programming shop, uh, so that means all of our engineers either write in Haskell or functional style of Scala. And we also happen to be the brains powering the AI offers for uh, Starbucks. So, if you got an email about this about five minutes ago, because we just sent out the offers today, uh, that's us. Uh, and with that, it's pretty great because Starbucks is a pretty enterprise customer, you'd say. Uh, and so that means that we need to have enterprise levels of up, up time. And so somebody else decided that Elastic Beanstalk is how we're gonna do this with Terraform for our infrastructure as code. Not a bad choice, throw Docker at it. It's pretty easy. Uh, but it has some issues with the way we set it up before. Uh, so we ended up having to uh, intertwine the config and the infra. And what that ended up looked like was not great. Uh, we also ended up having drift because a fire happens. Uh, we need to go change something in the UI. We don't actually backport that out to the Terraform. And then we try and fix things, and we ended up with a hand-rolled bash script that actually did some sim links and a blacklist and a whitelist and a bunch of other things for how we deploy out Terraform. Uh, it wasn't great. Um, and this is what it looked like when I joined a year ago. We had, if we were lucky, an outage once a month, if not more, um, and we needed to fix this. So I come in and you know, I'm very optimistic because it's a new company, I'm you know, moving out to the Bay Area, it's great, and well, we need to stabilize this. So I went through and step one is no more Terraform ran on our laptops. Uh, I decided to split things out into two uh, new repos for infra and Terraform modules. We wanted to have a fresh, clean start and utilize Terraform modules, which we weren't previously using before, uh, to have small, reasonable bits of code so the way we don't have to intertwine everything. Uh, and then we also decided to start using Atlantis. Atlantis is a pretty great tool that just got by, bought by HashiCorp uh, for doing a GitOps style of uh, plans and applies. And that means that we don't have to have Terraform running on laptops anymore, right? It's great. So uh, with that, we now need to move on to deploying services. We can do uh, infrastructure pretty well. Uh, so that comes in Kubernetes, right? And I Googled Terraform Kubernetes, this module came up. So that's it, right? We plug it in, we run apply. 10 minutes later, we've got an EKS cluster. We've done the Kubernetes. We're worth a billion dollars, I think. Um, not so much. We actually need to understand what's going on in the cluster, as well as we need to understand how to get services actually running on to that cluster. So that's where we come into uh, a couple other services that we want to utilize to be able to understand what's going on there. Uh, cluster Autoscaler is an open source tool. I'm not going to go into all these very specifically. Uh, makes it autoscale your cluster. S simple enough. Uh, cert Manager with Nginx Ingress, that way we can not have to worry about our SSL search because that's hard everywhere you go, um, as well as utilizing FluentBint uh, for grabbing some extra metadata from the Kubernetes cluster for our logs and using Amazon's managed Elasticsearch because storage in Kubernetes is more challenging than we wanted to deal with. Uh, we also decided to utilize Prometheus with Amazon EFS because EFS or EBS backup wasn't a option when we looked at this two months ago. Thanks, Amazon, for letting us know that. Uh, and then we've also needed to deploy out those things we just talked about. So we're using Flux from Weaveworks. It's another GitOps method of deploying things. Uh, and it also has a great integration with Helm. So what we can do with that is we can write out charts and template things out, you know, buzzwords, and we can pull all those things in, deploy them out to all of our environments. It also has support for external charts. So all those things that I put on the previous slide before, it's, you know, it's done. We just import it in, just like yum install, easy enough. And so that's great. We've got all these things, we can look at the cluster, we've got our services running, we're done. We're worth $2 billion at this point, I think. Not really. Uh, what happens is, you know, real life comes in, uh, and we need to figure out how to debug things, and it takes time. There's toil, because we don't just get to work on this every day. There's things that come up, incidents happen, et cetera. Uh, and then you also have to figure out what happens in the cluster, because Kubernetes is sometimes a fickle beast. Uh, you have to understand whether it's your fault or the config fault, probably your fault. You just didn't read the readme right. Um, and Kubernetes can't actually fix the memory leak that's in your code. So that's a lot. Uh, I cover this at a you know, million foot high level. If you'd like to know a little bit more about how we actually did this, please feel free to find me afterwards. And we're also hiring if you're interested in joining. 